Okay, I just wanted to hear your voice. I missed you, yep. It started with early morning practice and a love for the game. Then came the bright lights of Friday night, the high school rivalries, the cheer of the crowd, competing to win and stand out to take that next step. Today, UNLV changes the lives of young athletes forever and creates a game plan for their team's future a chance to pursue an education and play college ball. It all begins right now. Fox 5 and the Silver State Sports and Entertainment Network present the Red Zone Sports Show Signing Day Special. Get ready for the unveiling of the future for UNLV football. Kevin Bollinger welcoming you inside our Fox 5 studios for a special edition of the Reb Zone Sports Show. It is signing day. We have the entire UNLV football coaching staff right here with us, and we will sit down to talk about all of the new players that have signed on to play for the Rebels. Paloma Villacana, Vince Sapienza, and Steve Cofield will also be joining me throughout the next hour and a half. But first, we're going to get things started with UNLV's new head football coach, Barry Odom and coach we talk about the kids excitement when they sign on the dotted line there on signing day for the coaching staff it has got to be just as exciting it's a huge day for our program and uh, we're thankful to be here today uh, our staff for you know the last month they've been relentless on the on the road in, in recruiting and finding quality student athletes that will provide great experience at, at UNLV and uh, Really excited about the class that we put together. We've addressed immediate needs that we think that we need in this roster. And today is the next step in their career and their future. And we're sure excited to have the opportunity to coach them. When you're looking for a player that is going to become a rebel, what type of player are you looking for both on and off the field? Well, I think you can look at a number of our, our 25 that we signed that we'll announce today. And a lot of them have similar qualities. They're, they've got great competitive spirit. There may be captains of their team. They've competed and won championships. They're elite in some category of the area where that's strength, speed, quickness, uh, but all of them have the qualities of what we're going to build our foundation on. And uh, it's toughness, and it's the way that you play the game. It's willingness to work, and they're going to be great teammates for each other. And, and this is the start for us to go win a championship. It is no secret that, obviously, this coaching staff came in. You know, after the, the football season ended last year, a lot of work had to be done. How did you kind of prioritize getting out to different areas of the country and even north of the border to make sure that you got the right players to come here? Yeah, number one, I wanted, I wanted our current team to understand that we wanted this group to stay. You know, the current team in our locker room, we want them to be here because they are they're our team and they're the future of what we're going to do and now adding – to in either high school recruiting, junior college recruiting, or a transfer uh, market. I think we addressed the things that we needed to. Number one, we're going to recruit the city. Uh, we're going to recruit Las Vegas. There's great high school coaches here. Uh, there are tremendous players here. And moving forward, we're going to attack the city. Uh, we're going to build it with UNLV, with, with Vegas kids. And then our, our staff over the years, the connections that they've made throughout the country. You know, I think we signed 16 different states are represented in this class, and that's reflective of the relationships that this staff has throughout the country. On, in short term, they did a great job on putting the class together on what we think 
uh, will help us start to build the foundation of our program. Well, let's start learning about the newest Rebels that are here. We're going to turn now to Paloma Villacana. She is standing by with offensive coordinator Brennan Marion. Paloma? Yeah, Brennan Marion's ready to kick things off. He's got the cowboy hat. He's got the cowboy boots. He's ready to roll on National Signing Day. But, Coach, exciting to have you in studio. Already see the energy you bring to Las Vegas. It's exciting to see that. But want to talk about your roots in Texas, coming from the University of Texas with Bo Edmondson, coming from Lake Travis High School, one of the best high schools in all of Texas. Here he is right here, 6'2", 190 from Lake Travis, Austin, Texas. You know about Texas football players. What kind of athlete is Bo Edmondson? Well, Bo is from a, a, an electric program. Lake Travis is one that's known for top quarterbacks, some of the greatest quarterbacks in, in college and, and professional 11 have, uh, came out of there. So uh, when we got an opportunity to to get the job here, you know, Bo was one of the guys we looked at as somebody that could change the program and, and really help us lead this class. Yeah, talk about his athleticism coming from a Texas background, that Texas culture. Baker Mayfield came out of his high school. What do you see on film from Bo that attracts you, that can elevate your quarterback room? Well, the best thing about Bo is his intelligence. Um, he's been trained by guys that were in the college level already in the NFL ranks uh, mm -hmm. as a quarterback. Um, he has an elite arm. Uh, he's able to make all the throws, um, and he knows how to get the ball to his guys in space uh, to create touchdowns and explosive plays. Let's talk about another versatile uh, quarterback, D'Angelo Irvin Jr. He's listed as an athlete on the roster. He's played on both sides of the ball. He's a talented athlete. You mentioned to me he even played baseball in high school. Talk about the versatility he brings to the roster. Well, D'Angelo is special. He comes from a tough program, what we're, we're all about, a tough, gritty program in Midwest City. Um, this kid can do it all with the ball in his hands. He's electric, dynamic, explosive. All those words that you think about a one-play touchdown guy, he can do a lot of that. He's electric with the ball in his hands, and we're, we're blessed to have him. Where do you see him moving around possibly on both sides of the ball, or where do you see him moving around on this roster? I think he can help us at a lot of spots. You know, Wildcat quarterback, mm -hmm. receiver, mm -hmm. uh, return game maybe even defense. I mean, there's a lot of things that this guy can do to help our team win games. Yeah, he's fast out there. We saw him. It was all running in that in that video. So the dude is fast. Two elite quarterbacks joining the UNLV football program, but we're only getting started here on our National Signing Day. Kevin, what's more on tap today? Yeah, that is just the first layer, Paloma. We have got a lot of great players to talk about up next. We're going to take a look at the running backs who will be sporting Rebel Red. That is straight ahead as our Red Zone Signing Day special rolls on. Stay, stay right there. Kind of turned into this.
Welcome back. You are looking at the jewel of the desert, Allegiant Stadium. The UNLV Rebels call this place home, and it's a big attraction for new recruits who wouldn't want to play in a world-class stadium. Let's send it over now to Vince Sapienza. He's standing by with running backs coach Cornell Ford. Thanks so much, Kev. Cornell Ford here now with me. And uh, Coach, we got two running backs here on National Signing Day. I know you don't want to waste time, so let's get right to the first. Darian Jones, DJ, as you call him. And DJ, before yes. we talk about anything, Swag, look at those shades. Is, is that who DJ is? Is that a guy who's coming to UNLV and bringing something with him? He's dripping in it. Yeah. yeah he's dripping <laughs> in it. He's pretty good, though. He's a pretty good football player. Excited to have him. Big, physical, downhill player. Um, plays with his pads. Um, really, really explosive and great coming out of the backfield with the ball in his hands. And let's let's see what he looks like on the field. There he is just, just running through the arm tackles down the sideline. Over 2,400 all-purpose yards in his prep career. A guy who knows how to find the end zone. 25 touchdowns. When you're looking at the tape as we are right now, what are you seeing? I'm looking at a, at a big physical guy. Uh, very, very talented. Um, can, can be on the field all three downs. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of those every down backs. Uh, they can get the job done. And is, is he one of those guys that you, you can see coming in the summer, coming in the fall, and, and competing right away? I want every single guy in our program to come in and thinking mm -hmm. that they can, they can contribute right mm -hmm. away. Um, and he's, that kind of, he's got that kind of mindset and attitude. So he's, he's ready to go to work. High expectations for DJ. Let's talk about the other running back in this class and uh, Jaden, the Jet. Thomas, I mean, talk to me. I mean, the Jet. We're, we're talking speed, right? Hey. When we're talking speed, what, what are we really talking about right here? This guy is, is super fast, super quick. Mm -hmm. um, when you have a, a nickname, the Jet, I mean, you're the dude, right? You're the man. <laughs> you better be the dude, you right? You better be. You're better. And, and coming out of Atlanta, he's that kind of a football player. Everybody talks about this young man. Again, an every down back that can play on all three downs for you. Get him the ball uh, in the backfield deep and just let him do his thing. Get him to that second level, and he's one-on-one -on -one with, with safeties and linebackers, and that's a done deal. It's a, he's always going to win a one-on-one -on -one battle. It's fascinating, these two running backs, almost identical numbers, over 2,400 yards, all-purpose yards for him, 27 touchdowns in his prep career. We were talking earlier off camera how you were saying you like guys who know how to find the end zone. Both these guys can do that. Both of them can do it and do it a lot, mm -hmm. and we plan to, to get them the ball as soon as they get here. You and Coach Odom obviously uh, go ways back, so how much does it go moving forward in terms of signing these running backs, in terms of knowing what you like, what he likes, and what that looks like on the football field come fall? Well, Coach Odom is a, is a, a physical you know, coach, mm -hmm. wants to play tough football, and he knows that you've got to have two good backs uh, in your program um, to, to, to have some success. And so um, I know what he likes. He knows what I like in, in backs, and uh, it's, a, it's a, good, um, a good combination. Pull back, a, pull back a, a little bit of the curtain in terms of what these players are going through. So these two running backs, they, they obviously signed with UNLV a, a big day in their careers as, as student athletes. Uh, what are the conversations you're having with them on a day like this, or, or do you just kind of let them enjoy with family and friends and the celebration? No, generally what I do is I, I generally talk to the kids early mm -hmm. in the morning just to get their day started. Um, we get their paperwork in, and we talk about what they have planned for the day. And then generally after they sign their papers at the high school with their ceremonies, then we get back together again a little bit later in the day and just talk about how the day went. It's a big day for all of these kids. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been thinking about this for years, and um, we just want to be there to support them as best we can. So you're not getting on the phone with them asking how many sprints they did today? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> not we, we got plenty of time for that. <laughs> Cornell Ford, UNLV running backs coach. Coach, thank you so much. Welcome sure. to Vegas. Now let's send it over to Steve, who is with the tight ends coach, Nate Longshore. Hi, Vince. Nate Longshore is here. First of all, you're back. That's awesome. Back for some more. Can't wait. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of these recruits, and we'll talk about the room in general because uh, you've now got a room that's really layered. But it starts with a Juco and a freshman. Let's first of all talk about the 2023 who's in in Charlie Williams. By the way, no Charles Williams, right? We've retired that name. The Chuck Wagon gets those honors until future honors. But in Charlie Williams, a guy who's got a little more experience even as a 2023 because he did a postgrad. But let's talk about his skill set first. Yeah, so his skill set, he's a, he's a wide receiver. He's an elite wide receiver that just kept growing, kept oh, wow. eating, kept growing. And uh, so having that skill set makes him really dynamic. Uh, let's watch a little video here of Charlie and his skill set. But uh, very intriguing right off the bat that you say he's a receiver first. 
and growing into the position. What do you see here on video in terms of the catch skills? I mean, he's got elite ball skills. So just being a, a receiver by trade, he's got that. And you see here, he's got some point of attack, strike ability. He's explosive as he gets off the ball and he uses his hands well. You got a big fella in Christian Earls, who's 6'7", about 240 pounds. Uh, so talk about him. Is he a pass catcher? Or is he more of a blocker? What do you think? So Christian comes to us from junior college, Kilgore in Texas. He's a big, like you said, he's a big body, 6'7". When he showed up, I was happy. He's probably 255, 260. Ooh. So he's really a true Y. He can put his hand in the ground. He can dominate the point of attack, both in the run game, but also in the pass game. Even at that size, he still moves kind of like a small forward. And again, he's got some, some elite ball skills. And with that length, he creates a mismatch on defenses. Let's watch some video here of Christian Earls. So what are we seeing from the big fella? He moves well. I mean, for his size to be able to make the cuts he makes and be able to separate, you'll see him as he gets across here, he catches the ball and his ability to run after the catch. Uh, he's got us all excited and, and happy to see what we can do with him. So I wanted to talk about landing these two guys, uh, but especially Charlie Williams, because as I mentioned, IMG, post-grad. But, you know, a lot of times it's not just you as the tight ends coach going out and locating the players. With uh, Charlie Williams, it was a collaborative effort, right, with uh, one of the other new coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Coach Vice was instrumental in bringing uh, Charlie in. He had recruited him quite heavily while he was at Virginia Tech. And uh, so that relationship really helped us get inroads into a, a kid out of a a premier school in Florida. The room is loaded now. This is great. UNLV fans should be really excited because, you know, I was mentioning to you, sometimes we'd go out to practice and you're, you know, you're working with four healthy guys. The room got really thin the last couple of years. So um, experience is back at the top of the room. And then you've got it layered in terms of the classes. Yeah, we did. Uh, we, we've done a good job of building, like building that depth and also building the, the versatility within the room. There's a lot of talent in the room. There's a lot of tools in the room. And I look forward to the tight ends kind of being the Swiss Army knife of the offense this year. So the big question is, we don't know exactly what the go-go offense is and what happens for the tight end. So what's the learning curve there? And what's the goal for these guys? What's your goal for them? in this different offense? Uh, as this offense evolves, I, I imagine we're going to try to get our best 11 on the field. So if, if we can have one or two tight ends or maybe two backs are hot, well, whatever that advantage play is, um, having guys with different skills and different elite traits is really what you want, and then you can put them in a position to be successful. How much of the tight end room is going to be player-led? Obviously, you're the coach, you're the boss, but because of the experience, how much can the older guys kind of help out your new recruits in, in Charlie Williams and Christian Earls? Yeah, I mean, I mean, that is huge to have guys in the room that have a lot of experience, uh, have been through some coaching changes, have been through some install phases. Uh, that's that is instrumental, and it also helps them learn better. If I kind of put some of it on the older guys to teach and install, it will actually help the older guys just as much as it helps the younger guys. And last one with a couple of seconds that we have here. How exciting is it for tight ends to know that hey, they may actually be targeted? Because in the end, blocking is cool, but you know the reward is some pass catching. How fired up are they? Oh, they're excited. I mean, tight ends one of those jobs where there's 70 plays in a game and we've got 10 targets on a good get on a good day there's still 60 plays we've got to have an impact and we've got to you know be selfless about it we have Nate Longshore here for what five minutes you have been a busy guy you have been a very busy guy uh, all over California good job man I mean that, that's a, that was a long time on the road so Nate Longshore great job loaded room now a tight end for UNLV we'll send it back over to Kevin all right, thanks, Steve. Looking forward to watching that position group. And also this one as well, the wide receivers. They can open up an offense, and you got to score points if you want to win in the Mountain West. We're going to look ahead at the wideouts that could help take this offense to the next level. Just say your name, please. Dale Alexander.
Welcome back to our Red Zone Sports Show Signing Day Special. I'm joined now by wide receivers coach Dell Alexander to talk about his position group. And welcome back, Dell Alexander, former assistant under Jeff Horton and also under John Robinson. You make yes. your return to UNLV. I know your kids, uh, you know, have gone here as well and are mm -hmm. going here now. You, you excited to be back in Rebel Red? Yeah, I am. It's like I've never left. Uh, every summer I'm here, you know, so the boys are here and I'm happy to be back. All right, it's easy to sell the program that you know well, mm -hmm. and he certainly did it with these guys. Guys, let's start with Jacob DeJesus, and uh, here's, a, here's a kid that can do a, a lot of damage, it looks like, in the middle of the field as well. Yes, uh, Jacob's someone you want to get the ball too quick. You want to make sure you get it in space. Uh, he's a return man. He's exciting with the football, and we're looking for great things out of Jacob. Let's show some video of him so mm -hmm. uh, everyone can get a, a look at what he does. And, you know, you make your money there in the middle of the field, and, and the moves that he has right there, that, that can open a lot of things up. Yes, he doesn't need a lot of room. Uh, we can get the ball out there in his hands. He catches the ball. He's got strong hands. He makes the first defender miss, as you see here. Uh, and if we can get the other receivers downfield blocking, we can score some touchdowns. You mentioned he could also return kicks. How important is it for this wide receiver group to have some vers versatility? Uh, for me, it's the number one thing I look for. You know, a guy that plays on both sides of the ball as well as special teams, because you never know when you're going to be needed. Well, let's talk Rashawn Jackson now, uh, another wide receiver and versatile type of, of mm -hmm. player who's got a little bit of size to him. Uh, that's got to make you really happy. Yes, you definitely want to get some size in the room. Uh, Rashawn is 6'1", 195. He's from Venice High School. Um, I've known his coach since I started coaching, you know, and he, he got me on the phone. He said, hey, here's a guy that you want to get. You know, he can catch the ball. He can run the ball. He can also return kicks, and, and that's what you see on his highlight. One thing that we're seeing a common theme with the running backs and the wide receivers, all these specialist position, speed. Yes. We got a lot of speed coming in. Yes, you got to have speed. You see Rashawn scoring a touchdown here. Uh, here you see he's uh, faking the punt there. He can do things with the ball. Um, he's a dynamic player. And again, with the versatility, you know, we can put him anywhere uh, to make plays for us. Uh, Corey Thompson Jr. Uh, is the next one up on the list uh, on this group. And when you, you look at somebody who comes from the San Diego area, a yes. very good football uh, area, and yes. he's somebody who really stood out down there. Yes, uh, Corey, again, versatility is a key. You know, he's from Lincoln High School, which is a big time school there in San Diego. Uh, comes from a great family. Um, but when you look at Corey, you'll also be able to see a guy that can catch the ball, run with it, play defense. You know, I just got to keep him away uh, from uh, coach. Coach Akeem, uh, he's a receiver. <laughs> Uh, guys that can extend uh, defenses are, yes. are so important uh, in the Mountain West uh, to, to have guys with the speed and the ability to get down. Yes, there. yes. You look at this group of guys and you can see guys that can uh, create uh, first downs as well as scoring touchdowns. You know, they, we, can, we can attack a defense from all over the field. And I think you can see guys play in the slot, in the boundary, or to the field. Uh, but most importantly, like you see there, scoring touchdowns to win games. When you talk about the, the players and coming from these programs mm -hmm. and how much you know the coaches already that you're recruiting yes. from, how important is that when you're looking at players to know how they were coached at the high school level before you get them in college? I think it's important that, you know, you look at my group and they're all from California. You look at the, the class uh, as a whole. It's about those relationships, you know, to be able to get kids from all over the country, uh, especially here in our own backyard, uh, is important. And it starts with those relationships, and I'm fortunate to have I've been here before, so uh, there's a lot that I know and a lot of experience, and, uh, and those, co those coaches are a big help. And as somebody who recruited here uh, mm -hmm. a couple of decades ago to now, how have things changed? We know the facilities have changed right. a lot. How has that made the job different for you now compared to back then? Well, it's a game changer. Uh, when you look at facilities across the country, you know, it's as good as those, those facilities that I've been in uh, since I left here. Uh, so when we get families and recruits on campus and they come into the building, you know, their eyes are wide, they see it, uh, and it's something that leaves a, leaves a lasting impression. All right, Coach Dell Alexander, welcome yep. back back to UNLV. We're happy to have yep. you here. Still to come, a strong offensive line can protect the quarterback and open up some running lanes. We have a group of young men that are ready to take on the challenge, and you're going to meet the new recruits of the O-line next. Like your belly button will be in the middle.
Vance. Uh, Coach, can we get a mic check? Just say your name. Vance, Vice. Recruiting the next class and the game plan for the future. Live from the Fox 5 studios, you're watching the Red Zone Sports Show Signing Day Special. Welcome back inside our Fox 5 studios. I'm Kevin Bollinger, and so far we've met the recruits for quarterback, running backs, the wide receivers, and the tight ends. We have a lot more to go. This is a huge class for UNLV, but we're joined once again right now by head coach Barry Odom. And coach, let's talk a little bit about the, the orders, I guess, that you would give to, to your staff when they're going out there. How do you like your players recruited when they go out on the road and get in and talk with the families? Well, Coach Alexander mentioned about relationships, and I, I I believe that in, in all of recruiting, it maybe geographically doesn't matter as much as it does on stepping into the program, meeting the head coach, meeting the families, meeting the parents, and then establishing a real relationship and giving them the vision on what our program is gonna be, the impactful meaning of going to UNLV and what that degree looks like when you graduate, what it looks like for the next 50 years of their life. But I believe if you're a recruiter and you're a personable uh, coach, you can recruit anywhere. And our, our coaches have done a tremendous job in, in the last month on putting that class together, on building it around relationships, on being real, being authentic, being open, being honest about how they fit, how those young men fit into our program, what it looks like to get a degree from our place, how we're gonna compete for championships, and then how we're gonna do it in, in short order. And those things all combined, I think our, our, our guys understand the way that they represent UNLV, the, the excitement we have to live in the city of Vegas, all those things combined makes it a tremendous opportunity to be in school here at this time. You sell the coaching staff, you sell the program, the facilities, help sell that as well. UNLV's made a huge investment with the Fertitta football complex on campus, obviously playing the games at Allegiant Stadium. How much does that impact? I mean, they are teenagers and you wanna be able to show them a little of a wow factor. Yeah. You've coached in the Power Five conferences. UNLV stacks up pretty good facilities wise. I would put our facility against anybody in the country and the Fertitta family, you know, the, the football complex, Allegiant, like you mentioned, our practice facility, our fields. Uh, Everything within our complex, from meeting rooms to locker room to academic resource center to dining hall, everything's under one roof. And once the student athlete gets in our, our building for the day, they're there. Uh, it's very unique in that the, the dorms that we live in are right down the street. Uh, so for kids that maybe have never been here, parents that have never been here, they're able to see it through their lens, through their scope, and you can visualize yourself here. It's tremendous. The sell on what we have once we get kids on campus, uh, we can recruit anybody in the country here. And for fans, you know, the excitement uh, as it builds, it's not only to see the team, but also the facilities as well. Many of them maybe have not made their way to Allegiant Stadium. 
they're going to have a chance to come out on the spring game. We're breaking news here, not only with the players in the recruiting class, the spring game, April 8th at Allegiant Stadium, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's going to be free to the public so they can come out and check out your new team out here at UNLV. We're so excited about that, the partnership we have with Allegiant to play in the stadium. We're going to start spring practice a month from today. We start March 1st. And then we'll go, we'll get five practices in before spring break. We'll come back with 10 more after break and finish with the spring game on April 8th. April 8th. Uh, we're so excited to have the chance to do that uh, in, in that stadium. And it'll be an exciting time for UNLV football. And UNLV season tickets are already on sale. Uh, $125 is where they start out. You can go to UNLVtickets.com. They've got a great home schedule. Hawaii comes for their every other year visit. And Vanderbilt, the first SEC team to ever come to play in Las Vegas against UNLV. So go to UNLVtickets.com and get on those season tickets now. Let's talk a little bit more about the uh, offensive line. And we're going to toss it over to Vince Sapienza. And he is there with Vance Vice. Vince. All right, Kevin, Coach, we talked enough about the flash and dash. Let's talk about the guys who make the offense move. The O-line. Now, you got four signees today. One more, Matthew Green listed, O-line, D-line. We're going to touch on him in the next segment. But let's start with the local kid, Ed Haynes, out of Liberty. Coach Odom has talked about you guys want to recruit Vegas, and you guys have done so with this first one. Well, Ed's very, very excited about him joining our program. Uh, number one thing, we're looking for guys that love to work, and he's one of those guys. He's a great effort guy, has great size, has a little bit of a wrestling background, started his high school career in Louisiana, very familiar with that area. And then also his string coach there at Liberty is a guy that I signed and coached 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, being able to catch up and find out about him, but can't wait till May and get him here in June. and. You know, glad he's a rebel. And those relationships, how, how does that help, you know, this recruiting process? A guy like Ed, as we're looking at his video highlights right now, and what jumps off the page to you when you're seeing his video highlights? Well, just one, his, his athletic ability. And then, you know, looking for toughness, looking for extra effort plays. And those are the things that kind of separate you when you're going through a big pile of video. But uh, he's a guy that can come here, does a great job. He has character throughout his school. Uh, you know, everything, he kind of checks all the boxes. And, and like I said, having a guy there that I've coached before where he can kind of lean on him, he'll find out about me too, which will be an advantage when he, when he gets here, knowing what to expect and get ready to attack his college career. All right, let's switch gears now and talk about Jay Haas, a senior tra transfer out of Buffalo. Uh, he's been enrolled on campus for about a month, 6'4", 295. He's a guy that could be competing for that starting center, John. Uh, yes, Jack's on a mission. I mean, and he's a, a, he's a grown up, what I call him. And, uh, you know, he came in here, he's already in school, he's leading workouts, he's, he's getting guys together for meetings. You know, he played there at Buffalo, which has had some exceptional offensive lines here the last four or five years. And, you know, he started every game last year. He was a captain at Buffalo. Uh, his first year out of high school, you know, he played at Iowa Western, a community college there right outside of Omaha, which is his hometown, and uh, had some recruiting connections there. Just to find out a little bit of background on him, because when you're, uh, everything you can find out about these guys, especially transfers, is, is beneficial. But I mean, you know, great student in the classroom, great leader, uh, and comes to work every day. And, and then, you know, obviously he plays a little bit with a chip on his shoulder, and he's a, he's a guy that we, we're super excited about to have going through spring ball. How so. satisfying is it when you, you know, you look at all this tape, we're watching it right now, mm -hmm. and then hearing you say you see him on campus and he's already taking charge. He's already right. one of the leaders. How satisfying is that to see that kind of instant payoff? Obviously, we'll wait and see what he does here at UNLV, but see what he's doing early on. Well, it, it's satisfying in the fact that that's hope. He is what we hoped we were recruiting. Mm -hmm. And then to get him here already and see it come to fruition a little bit, you know, and and uh, you know him to you know kid from Omaha, Nebraska, coming to Vegas and and being one of the guys from from day one is, is sort of, certainly exciting. All right, let's talk about another transfer coming to town, Jalen St. John. He's a guy that's kind of followed Coach Odom a little bit mm -hmm. in his collegiate career. Spent last year in Arkansas, last three seasons in the SEC, 6'5", 320. Also enrolled here at UNLV uh, mm -hmm. in January, getting set to start his first practice coming up in the spring. 
What do you like about Jalen Sands? Well, one, he, he, as you can see, he's got some size. He's got some athleticism. He's a guy that we're very comfortable with knowing background. I think Coach Odom's known him since eighth grade. And, uh, but here he comes, a guy brings some experience from the SEC program. And, you know, again, you know, he's got something to prove. You know, I don't know how many times we're going to throw it, throw it to him. I mean, right there, after but, that, how do you not you, throw it to him at least know, a couple times? You know, he'll, he'll be asking for it after watching this. <laughs> I know that. But he's, in the end, he's a guy that we think can come in here this spring and work and, and you know, trying to get a spot. And, you know, that's what we don't really recruit guys that come in and back up. I want to recruit guys to start because competition is going to make us all better. And that room is going to be very, very competitive, not just every week, but every day. And that's, you know, finding those right type of guys that embrace that culture. And uh, I think definitely Jalen is one of those guys. And four-star prospect, obviously, coming out of high school, mm -hmm. top 10 in the country at his position yes. coming out of high school. Spends three seasons in the SEC in terms of what you you expect in terms of that instant what, what, what are we thinking out of out of Jalen here right well, well I mean he's obviously coming from Arkansas he's been in in a program and and understands a little bit about day-to-day -day life in college so it's not like he's just out of high mm -hmm. school and you know he, he knows exactly why he's here he has goals and, and we're gonna do everything we can to help him achieve those goals and coach, last but certainly not least, Austin Boyd, 6'4", 280 freshman coming to Vegas from Utah. He had offers from Army and multiple Ivy League schools. So mm -hmm. this guy's got a brain on him as well as LeBron. Won a couple state championships in high school. When you look at Austin Boyd, uh, the numbers, I guess, speak for themselves. But when you look at the tape, what really jumps out to you? Well, he's got a great frame and he's very athletic. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that, you know, obviously we talked about it. He's a 3'9 mm -hmm. GPA guy mm -hmm. and, and has played all five positions, and that's valuable. And then he comes from Lehigh there in Utah. You know, they've won the last two state championships, and winning is a habit. And but just seeing him, he plays with a little bit of extra effort. You can see, you know, several plays on his highlights, and then even his game films on other kids' highlights. He, I mean, you need to blow the whistle three times to make sure he stops. Which that's a, and that's a good, <laughs> that's a good thing. But we're super excited about him bringing a young kid in here, and and he's eager to get here this summer and, and get started. Obviously, as you saw in the picture, great flow, great stash to yes. his game already early on. See, there it is again. I mean, just yeah. fantastic. Great A, five stars out of the gate. But yeah. uh, as a whole, when you look at your recruiting class in terms of your position, the offensive line, the excitement for you on a day like this and then your conversations with the student athletes. Well, it is very exciting. And then, you know, you know, when they get their stuff in, and obviously it's a little bit different with Jalen and Jack there because they were in workouts mm -hmm. this morning. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, it's very easy to check on them. But these young guys, you know, talking to Austin this morning, I mean, it's super. I mean, but then just to reiterate that this is signing day. This is not the end. Mm -hmm. This is the start. And, you know, obviously this will be a very, very rewarding process. It'll be very hard, but in the end, you know, that's why we're here bringing those guys in here to win championships. After you put pen to paper, are you telling them get on the sleds, start, start moving? Start, or do you, get, do you give yeah. them the data something? They need to come in in shape. They do, they do understand that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> coach Vance Vice right there, O-line coach for UNLV football. Thank you so much. Coach, Ken, let's send it over to you. Thank you, Vince and Vance. We talked about all the offense. Let's go to the defense, and we're going O-line to D-line, taking a look at those recruits right there in the trenches. We're going to do it straight ahead. One, two, three, four, five.
You just heard Coach Odom talking about it. The Fertitta Football Complex on the UNLV campus, state of the art with top of the line amenities and practice space. They've been using it for the East West Shrine game practices all week. Bill Belichick has been out there coaching up players. It is a place that you have to really see to believe and the players certainly love spending so much time there. It's a great place to grow as a Rebel. Steve Cofield standing by with UNLV's new defensive line coach, Ricky Logo. Steve. All right, let's get into the defensive line. Ricky Logo is here. This is one of my favorite groups to talk about. Uh, working the sidelines for you know football, I hang out by the defensive lineman, even though I'm kind of, you know, kind of short and squatty. I can't play the position, but the intent you need and the you know the intensity uh, in the trenches for the defensive lineman, man, it's such a cool position, and you know it comes in all shapes and sizes. So Ricky Logo is here with us. He's a new defensive line coach for UNLV. So let's start with you first of all. Uh, you have Mountain West Conference experience. Why did you want to come back in? to the conference? Well, it, it had a lot to do with just the knowledge of the conference, the competition, but really had to do with the leadership and the vision from our athletic director and Coach Odom uh, really sold me into coming here. They have a great blueprint plan for the success of our program, and uh, there's, I would rather be here. Um, and live it rather than hearing about it. Okay, and it's always been one of those conferences in the Mountain West that maybe is a little bit underrated in terms of uh, defensive line, um, you know, in terms of ratings when the guys come in. But it is a league that has produced a ton of good defensive linemen. And you know from recruiting at Colorado State and Hawaii, there's a lot of talented players out there who have turned out to be great ones in the Mountain West. Oh, yes. A lot of talent here uh, up front, skill position. Uh, there's a lot of been great players that have come out this conference and uh, being here for the third time I'm excited. So the Rebels have three commits on the defensive linemen. They're all big fellas. They're all you know 6'4", 6'5". So let's start with Matthew Green. So a kid out of Colorado. Right now he's listed as O-line, D-line. We're going to get into that in a second, but just give me some of the general skill set uh, qualities of one Matthew Green out of Colorado. Well, the biggest thing about him, he has a lot of upside. Um, played offensive line and defensive line. Uh, what we really liked about uh, Matt is his ability to be able to transition from a run player to a pass player. Uh, so really a raw player for us right now. So a lot of the things that we're going to be teaching him is what he's going to be learning from our staff. The good thing about having him is you know, we have a great foundation with the three guys that we've signed out of high school. So we're looking at some Matt highlights here. He just came off the edge, uh, got a sack at, at 6'5 and 250. We see him in the middle of the line there mm -hmm. making a play. Uh, when you decide on a guy like this with that kind of size between O-line and D-line, he's going to be a defensive lineman. What's different, again, in terms of the skills that you need to be a, an elite defensive lineman versus the O-line? Well, I think uh, we touched it earlier about it. Uh, it's not just about his athleticism, but really about his mental toughness. Uh, when he's played offensive line, the physicality that it takes to play that position and transitioning it to playing interior defensive line, he's the right fit for what we're doing. These are young guys. They're all 2023, 20, so uh, you know we don't know if they're going to be able to fight to get some playing time this year, but you've got a nice layer group here. We're going to get to the whole group of the defensive linemen. Let's move on to Maxwell Peterson, who is a, even a little bit bigger, at, you know, 6'4 and, and 300 pounds. So um, all three of these guys were early signings, too. I mean, that was, you, know, you knew kind of what you had, so I wanted you to talk about Maxwell Peterson. Well, you talk about a, a young man that's about 300 pounds that can anchor the middle. Uh, a 300 pounder that can play inside, but in his highlight film, you'll be seeing him play some defensive end. Oh, wow. He moves really well for a big guy. Uh, you know, for him to be able to uh, push the pocket and make a pocket presence in there uh, is what we're looking for for our interior guys, and he can do that. Hey, you see him here. Uh, first play you saw was him uh, bursting up the middle and destroying a guard, and then he comes down the line from defensive end to stop a run play. Uh, heavy hands uh, for a defensive lineman, and you know, those are the things that you look at of being able to disengage and get off blocks and making a presence in the middle. So Green, Peterson, both good level recruits. Lucas Conti, in terms of hype coming in, may be the star of the group. Once he gets here, who knows what, what's going to happen. But Lucas was a highly coveted guy and a guy who had much interest from the Pac-12. Yes, uh, Lucas probably the highest rated defensive lineman in our class uh, out of the three. Um, his ability to be able to play the run, pass rush. He has the combination of both right now. He's definitely ahead 
of the other two just because it's a natural position for him. Um, not only does he play the defensive end position, but he also plays inside. And so when you look at those different things, it allows me to be able to put him in the right spots. If we have the need inside, he can play inside or he can play outside. So he gives us a lot of tools. So when we're talking about the room here with Ricky Logo, the defensive line room for UNLV, a lot of the most experienced players are kind of those fire hydrant dudes, six foot to six two, about 290. You look at three guys here all in that six three to six five range. Why were you interested in getting guys who are a little bit taller, maybe a little more rangy? Well, we wanted to get some length and we wanted to get some bigger guys. Uh, a great foundation to build your defensive line with uh, a player-led group uh, here at UNLV, and I think they're a right fit. After talking to them, meeting their families, uh, they're going to really fit in with the guys that we have here currently. Now, the interesting thing is there is going to be some different responsibilities for the linemen. The defense is changing. You guys aren't exactly sure uh, in what you have with the returning group, so you're going to start out thinking, hey, we're going to play multiple and then and kind of figure it out as it goes along, right? I think uh, our defensive coordinator, Coach Shear, has a plan on uh, what the kids are good at, and he's going to build it, that defense around what we're good at right now. And moving personnel around, that's something that we're meeting about daily and getting the right fit for what we're doing defensively, especially up front. Yeah, there's no sense in trying to take guys that you know, have experience and then go, hey, this is what you're going to do, and everything is going to change, and then they're miscast. So I want to talk about the group that's coming back here, um, experienced guys. I mentioned the fire hydrant guys. So you got Mavesi, you've got Darius Johnson, you've got Naki Fahina. You know, he healthy again, we hope. Mm -hmm. He missed most of the year last year. What I saw was a player-led group from a year ago and really tough guys, hard-nosed guys. And you're familiar with them in terms of, you know, having all your different stops and recruiting these guys. I've recruited some of the guys that are currently on the team. Uh, that was an advantage uh, coming into this uh, as I looked at the roster. I uh, had a relationship with uh, these young men that I've recruited in the past and came here to UNLV and how everything just comes in full circle. Um, you know, there's a saying, the best teams I've coached and, and I've heard it from a coach before is player led and this group is really player led and that's what I'm excited about. It allows me to concentrate on technique, fundamentals, where these guys keep each other accountable. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really easy to come into a group like that when it's player-led. Well, congrats on a new group of big fellas. You know, really good size here. Impressive class with this uh, three-man defensive line group. We'll uh, continue here. We'll send it back over to Kevin. All right, thank you, Steve and Coach Logo. Straight ahead, we're going to go to the next level of the defense, the linebackers. That includes two transfers from Power 5 schools and a freshman from the islands. We're breaking down some key pieces to the class that's on the back side of the break as our signing day special continues. And then, Mike, you're going to be right here at that white tape, and that's where your belly button is going to be, roughly. So, actually, we'll have to...
Las Vegas is a city like no other. The iconic views of the Strip never disappoint, whether it's by sun splash day or cast a glow by neon at night. Let's head back over now to Paloma Villacana. All right, joining me now is defensive coordinator Mike Shear, also linebackers coach at UNLV. Before we dive into the recruiting class, I want to talk about the close relationship you have with Coach Odom coming from Arkansas. Uh, yeah, so I've known him probably since you know almost eighth grade. He recruited me in high school um, <laughs> at the University of Missouri. Uh, I went and played at Missouri. Um, he was defense coordinator and head coach eventually during my time there, and then uh, went on to work for him and been with him ever since. So. Uh, We've been together for a while. We know each other well, and uh, I'm excited to be here with him. What kind of defensive mind, defensive talent does Odom bring to, to the defensive side of the ball that can only elevate the Rebels? Uh, obviously, he's been really successful everywhere he's been. Um, he taught a lot of people how to play football a really good way, and uh, hopefully I can try and mimic that here, and he can help me out and help our defense staff, staff out and do that with our players here. So I'm excited to get going. I'm excited to have him to lean on, and uh, it'll be fun. What excites you about bringing that SEC culture, bringing that SEC experience to this Rebels football team? Uh, you know, I don't know if it's so much about that league and that experience. It's more of uh, getting our players here and um, really putting our mark on them as, as a coaching staff and, and really their mark as who they are and, and what they want to be as a football team and going from there. Um, you know, yeah, we've been been some certain places, but we want to build something here even better than where we come from. Yeah, well, we got one guy from Arkansas, one guy from LSU, and a freshman from the islands. Let's start with blessing Alu Alu Tui Moatu from Kalihi, Hawaii, from one of the best high schools in Hawaii, James Campbell High School. Talk about blessing and, and his talent coming from Hawaii. We all know the talent that comes from the islands. What impresses you about this freshman? Uh, blessing, you know, one, he's a really good kid. I just got a chance to meet him and his family. Comes from a great family. He's a hardworking kid. He's been around the building. Um, he's already in the program. Uh, he's very good, very instinctual, moves well in space. Um, he's got really good ball skills and uh, he's not afraid to hit somebody. Um, so, you know, if you got those as combo as a linebacker, you can be pretty darn good. Um, so, like I said, he's, he's already on campus. He's already working hard in the weight room uh, and getting after it. And, and I'm excited about what he'll be able to do this spring. And, and getting him here right when we get started. Now he's a young guy in this in this linebacker room. How do you see him? 6'2", 210, how do you see him only growing under you? Yeah, I mean, obviously um, he, he's going to get bigger and stronger as mm -hmm. he's in the strength program with Coach Fish. And then as we get to working with him and, and just little fundamentals, he's obviously already a really good football player. Um, so there's not a whole lot. To, uh, I mean, I'll make him a little bit better, but he, he is who he is. He's a really good football player. Yeah. Um, and, and hopefully we can, we can help him out a little bit, extend his game. And, and I think he's going to be really good. Yeah, we know those Hawaii football players. They're tough. They're big. They're warriors. And we can't wait for him to be here. At, he's already here on campus at UNLV. But let's talk about a familiar face that you already know, Jackson Woodard, coming from Arkansas. Three seasons at Arkansas with, with you, coaching with you uh, for three years at Arkansas. How have you seen him only grow under you? Uh, yeah, I've been with Ron Woodard uh, for about three years now. And uh, he's 6'3", 230 pounds now. When we first got him, he was... 180 pounds soaking wet. Um, <laughs> he's a, a really hard worker, um, really smart kid. He's, he's going to be an oral surgeon someday uh, when he's done playing right. football. Um, so he's, he's got a good head on his shoulders, comes from a great family, and, and he's an extremely hard worker. Uh, you, don't, you don't get a scholarship where he was uh, coming from being a walk-on without working your butt off. And uh, that's what Woodard is, and that's who I expect him to be here. He'll be uh, extremely valuable for our defense. What kind of conversations did you have him uh, with him to make the move to Las Vegas and follow you and Odom out here? Uh, you know, really, I made the move out here, and um, I think he decided back home that he wanted to make a change for himself. And uh, thankfully, uh, he trusted me, and he liked me uh, maybe a little bit as his coach, so decided to, <laughs> to call me and see if we had any could possibly get him over here. And, and I was uh, beyond excited when I saw that he would be available and, and maybe have a chance to come here in Las Vegas. One of two Razorbacks in this class. Excited to have him here at UNLV. Let's talk about the LSU transfer. Xavier Carter coming from the SEC, bringing that SEC experience. Originally from Atlanta, Georgia. He's a Southern guy, Southern player. What kind of athleticism does he bring uh, to your roster? Uh, he's obviously, you know, 6'3". He's tall. He's long. Um, and he, he's got great athleticism. Um, you know, as he plays, see here, he's playing D end. Um, he has the ability to rush the passer, but also, also has the ability to stand on two feet and be a linebacker. Um, you know, he, he got experience at LSU, made some plays at LSU. 
um, was a four-star uh, recruit out of high school. He, uh, he's a very, very talented kid, and we got to help him bring it out of him. Um, and I think he's, uh, we're going to be able to use him in a lot of different ways in our system, and, and I'm excited to see what he can do. You have some big shoes to fill with, with Austin Ajike leaving the program, leading the Mountain West with 132 tackles. How do these three guys you know, fill that gap of Austin leaving the roster? Well, I think with, with Woodard and Xavier, you have two guys who have real experience playing football, real reps. Um, mm -hmm. That helps a lot. You, know, you get on the field for the first time, you're a young kid. It's, yeah. uh, things move fast. Um, so just to have that experience in the room, um, and to have mul multiple guys, I know Kyle Bougie had a lot of uh, success right. last year. Mm -hmm. We also got him in the room. He's an older guy. He can help lead, too. Um, so we have a good core of guys coming back, and, and I think there's some guys that are in the room that are really talented um, that, that have a chance, like Jordan Eubanks and, and maybe Brendan Scott and guys like that. Um, so I think we have a really good core of guys, and we need to figure out how we can use them best. All right, Coach Shear, Coach Odom, bringing those SEC guys to Las Vegas. Kevin, what's next on our amazing National Signing Day show here? More defensive players, which Coach Shearer is going to love up next. We're going to stay with the defense. We're catching up with the new recruits on the back end with the safeties and cornerbacks. It's all coming up straight ahead as the Red Zone Signing Day Special continues. Paloma, you're going to be on this side? Oh, wait, she's on this side? Oh, I'm sorry. Recruiting the next class and the game plan for the future. Live from the Fox 5 studios, you're watching the Red Zone Sports Show Signing Day Special. We are one hour down, but we're not close to being done. There are still several position groups left to talk about. Head coach Barry Odom back with us now. And we want to talk a little bit more about your staff. They had to come in late in the game. But they jumped out there and spread across the country and, and got things done very quickly. You talked about the fact that they already knew their regions maybe from, from previous jobs. How hard is that, though, to, to jump into a new program and roll as fast as you had to? I think the, the main thing, number one, I'm fortunate that we were able to hire the staff that we did because I think you know, I've been blessed for really every job that I've had. I've been around really, really good people. And I feel with very strong conviction about the quality of, of person that we have in every role uh, in, in our coaching uh, positions that, number one, they're great men, they're great teachers, they're great leaders, and they're going to be great mentors for every student athlete we have in our program. So I'm really fortunate with that. Um, you know, the guys understood on foundationally how we're going to build this program and what that's going to look like. And then they went about their work and we'd go out for a week at a time and everybody would get back on Thursday or Friday morning. 
um, and then we'd have an official visit weekend. You know, from the start of when the calendar went uh, live in January until last weekend, we had over 500 prospective student athletes on our campus. And that's a testament to not only our assistant coaches, but our administration, our recruiting department. You know, some of those were official visits, most of them were unofficial visits, but we're selling the brand of UNLV. And those guys, the prospective student athletes that came on campus with their families, they left knowing what uh, our vision is and we're sure excited about our future. And you had some early signees uh, in, in these class of the guys coming in, which allowed them, some of them, to go for the spring semester here at UNLV. So you get them in spring practice. How critical is that for the players that were able to do so to get on campus and start working with you guys? And we ended up having 14 mid-year signees. Um, and I think Coach Vice uh, visited with a, a earlier about the import shield. Some of the guys that he has signed, they worked out this morning. So. They get to go through the foundational part of what our winter conditioning program is going to look like, what the off-season program looks like, and obviously spring practice. Uh, they will be a veteran by the time that we get started in June. Well, let's get back uh, and taking a closer look at the newest Rebels. Paloma Villacana now is with safeties coach, Coach Mags. Yeah, Mags, a familiar face here in Las Vegas. This is his third season, just wrapped up his third season, now entering his fourth season with the Rebels. Want to talk about you first, just really quickly. Talk to me about what you've seen from Coach Odom and this new staff he's, he's brought to you in LV. Yeah, I think the big thing is Coach Odom has a, a deep relationship with a lot of the guys, uh, previous players that got into the coaching profession and guys from all different stops. Um, so just the community of them gelling together and the open communication and allowing somebody who's kind of been out of the circle and bringing me into the circle has been a blessing. Yeah, I want to talk about the experience that Odom is bringing to this program, several Power Five transfers. What does that SEC experience only help uh, UNLV football? I think I think it allows a lot of us to that are younger, specifically maybe myself and Coach Davis, uh, in the back end to uh, have somebody to lean on uh, that we can communicate with, ask questions about. Um, and I think that's that experience is going to uh, pay off in the long run. All right, want to talk about Jalen Frazier, the senior transfer from North Carolina State. Jalen Frazier, 5'10, 185, like we just mentioned, a senior transfer from North Carolina State. <laughs> You grabbed him on the other side of the country. <laughs> what impresses you about Jalen? Uh, he comes from a, a really good high school, Huff High School out there in Charlotte. Um, he, he played all three positions at NC State. Mm -hmm. uh, his background, his mom ran track. Uh, his dad is a coach at Huff High School. Uh, so that football IQ really stands out. Obviously playing those different positions, growing up in a football household. Uh, and then speed. He's got mm -hmm. elite speed, elite athleticism, and we're extremely excited to, to get him in our program and be working with them. Yeah, UNLV has had a young secondary. How does his maturity and his experience only elevate the room? Yeah, he, like you said, he brings that experience. He's been in big games. He started in the bowl game. Uh, he's been at this level for a couple of years. And so bringing that maturity and different aspects to uh, a group that has now started to grow uh, is going to be tremendous for us. I want to talk about Jackson Turner, the senior transfer from Arizona, another big get for you guys. Like we just mentioned, bringing that experience to UNLV from Arizona. Arizona talk about his playing four seasons in the Pac-12 that only brings experience to your room. Yeah he has a calmness about him uh, and I think playing DB uh, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, something bad may happen you got to be able to bounce back so his maturity and the calmness that he plays with uh, but he's a bigger body guy but mm -hmm. don't let that confuse you he can run he's got uh, transitions he's fluid in his movements and again with all that experience comes the football IQ and between him and Jalen they're, they're two guys that play with the motor and they're constantly constantly attacking the football like you can see in some of these clips here. With these two guys and Odom and his defensive staff that he's brought over to UNLV, how have you already seen uh, the defensive side of the ball improve for you guys? I think the big thing for us will be keep it simple. I mean, we're mm -hmm. recruiting these guys, you know, with their character, athleticism, let them go play. Uh, and the best that we can do that, that works around the guys that we have, I think it's going to pay off. All right, excited to see the improvements on defense for UNLV. Kevin, I'll send it back to you.
All right, thank you, Paloma. Let's keep it rolling here, and let's start talking about the back end. Corners back coach Akeem Davis is with us. And, all right, we know teenagers and recruits, they feed off of energy. This coaching staff has brought a lot of energy to this UNLV program. Absolutely. I mean, you play the game the right way when you're having fun playing the game. And nothing great was ever done without great energy and enthusiasm. And, you know, it's already hard to win ball games, but we're going to have a tremendous amount of fun. We're going to game plan, we're going to win, and we're going to do it having a tremendous amount of fun. You got a group coming in here on the back end. We, we talked about a running back earlier whose nickname was Jet. Let's start with a guy whose name is Jet, Jet yes, Eli. Uh, is somebody who is coming from north of the border. He is a Canadian. Yes, sir. Jet Elad is from Missagua, Ontario in Canada. Um, played his prep ball in Cleveland, Ohio by way of St. Ignatius. He's six foot one, 205 pounds. He's very versatile athlete that can play corner, that can play nickel, that can play on the roof and close the middle of the field. You can see him here as he's covering in the slot right there. Really good hips right there. Great range. Good football like you got his eyes back and was able to break up the ball in right here. Um, just football instincts, football IQ, um, QB key ball out break, was able to get his hands on the ball and intercept the football right there and right there on the hash, swiveling his hips, breaking on the football, and uh, playing the game the way it's supposed to be played the right way, which is hard, sport and tough. Those are the kind of guys we're looking for. We know Mountain West, there's a lot of schools that like to sling the ball a little bit. There's been some great quarterbacks that have come out of there. The back end is so important. What are you seeing uh, from this group as a hole that maybe is going to help the, the defense take that step to the next level? Versatility. I mean, these guys can play corner, they can play nickel, they can play safety, they play the game the right way, they, they're physical, they're fast, they have good football acumen, they're football players, they bring a tremendous amount of experience to the back end, and, and that's what we kind of need. Um, they, they bring length, they bring size, they bring um, strength, physicality, and those are the things that we're looking for, and that, those are the things that we're excited about this back end for because they're going to give us what we need to take the next step. All right, Cameron Jenkins is next up on that list and definitely has uh, all of those attributes that you Absolutely. talk about. 6'1", 185. This guy's a baller. Yes, sir. Right out of Louisville High School in the great state of Texas. Some really good football players down there in Texas. And Cam is another guy we talk about with great range, physicality, elite ball skills. He's the, ty he's the type of guy that we'll be able to, again, provide, he, he will provide us with some position flexibility. As you can see, I'm right there coming down, reading the play, dissecting it, and running through the ball carrier. Um, he has a switch. He's a good young man with a hard edge. He loves the game of football. And like, again, those are the commonalities that we're looking for when we bring these guys in. Do they love ball? You know, do they love the weight room? And, and, and are they going to provide us the edge that we need to go and win the championship? It's all about instincts, too, from that position especially, right? Absolutely. Uh, Quentin Moten is, uh, is, is up next. Uh, here's somebody who's going to come in that uh, I know you guys are, are really excited about the, the possibilities of what he can bring to the table. Again, we talk about versatility. Quinn is a guy, he's again six foot, about 185 pounds, and Quinn has ball skills. You know, he's a cornerback, he's a, he, he plays with good clean feet, he's sticky, he's twitchy, he's really good when it comes down to short area quickness, so we don't have a problem sliding him inside to go and cover the slot. You can see him right here nice and clean in this pedal, playing the ball, playing the game with good pad level, and then going up, snatching that football out the air. We want to be an opportun opportunistic defense, and when the ball is in the air, there's no such thing as 50-50 that we want the ball, and we want to give it back to our offense so they can score a whole lot of points. And so when we recruit these guys, we're looking for guys that can go up and do just that. Go, snatch the ball out the air, and not only snatch it out the air, when you talk about running after the catch, we want to go and score touchdowns on defense as well. Uh, I know Rebel fans love hearing that. Uh, we saw he's going to be transferring from a JC. We Absolutely. also have transfers coming in from, from four-year universities, and then you have the high school kids. What do the transfers bring to the table that maybe gets them rolling a little bit faster uh, when you're talking about getting on campus? Experience. Um, they've played a lot of ball. Um, they played a lot of snaps and a lot of downs, and they can bring those young guys uh, along with them, kind of show them how the game is supposed to be played, how the way to go about their day-to-day, -day, um, how, to, how to handle business on the back end in the classroom, you know, on on the college campus, how to build great relationships off campus as well. And um, that, those, th those guys with that experience are going to help those young guys out a lot. All right, he's Corners coach Akeem Davis coming up. We're going to take a look at the special teams and some of the walk-ons as well who are working to make a big impact on the program. Stay with us.
Welcome back inside our Fox 5 studios. We're going to send it over now to Steve Cofield, who is with Special Teams Coordinator James Shebest. All right, let's get into special teams. we got plenty of time for you here. We can talk a lot of special teams. There's a lot of things to talk about. Hey, uh, a couple weeks ago, we got to meet all the coordinators, and you were there as well. So, hey, special teams is a unit that's about as important as a defense and offense. First thing I want you to mention is, and James Shebest is here with us, you come to UNLV from some power fives in the past, you know, Memphis in the past, and you, you mentioned something to me about why you came here, and you talked about just being happy as a coach. You want to be in the right place with the right staff. Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of that has to do with who you work for. So, uh, obviously, the big reason was Coach Odom. And uh, we had talked about for years just uh, getting back, coaching together again since our days from Memphis. We know each other. And you get close to guys on, on the staff, and that makes the job fun daily because uh, as much time as we spent, uh, you know, working and stuff, boy, you want to uh, you want to be around the right guys. So getting a kicker is really important. That had some experience. So, uh, he's been the starter at Missouri State for the last three years. I had a really high field goal percentage, just above 83 percent. Uh, which is really good. Don't have a really big leg. Uh, hopefully uh, with me, you know, with Coach Fish in the weight room, we can get him a little more explosive and a little bit more stronger for possible long field goals and kickoffs. But just you get a vibe when you're you know, recruiting a guy and you can tell he's confident, he's a competitor, and uh, that'll help him in the pressure situation and pressure kicks. And as you mentioned, incredibly accurate. Uh, also really good on extra points. You don't want to be missing extra points. You mentioned something interesting to me, uh, interesting to me a couple minutes ago. You spoke with him, right? You really couldn't get out and see all these kickers. Yeah. You spoke with him. So what did you want to hear from your perspective uh, starting kicker? Well, that's the toughest part. I mean, it's uh, you always like to watch these guys live. And you can watch all the video you want, but there's something different when you watch them live. But we didn't have that, you know, uh, luxury in this situation. So uh, you just get a feel. You use your instincts of coaching. You know, I've been coaching a long time and recruiting a long time. And you just uh, feel something uh, about guys when you're talking to them. Uh, and then, you know, when he visited, too, you get a uh, good feel for him, too. Great family, uh, really close family. Uh, I'm asking mom for some homemade tamales, so hopefully they'll get that, <laughs> okay, there you go. Get that to me. <laughs> but, uh, but you can just get a feeling with the family and everything and, and the bond there. But uh, you just use your instincts on it and, and can tell usually. For you, coaching kickers, do you talk more technique or is it more the mental side of it? Well, I'm really more, I, you know, they all got these, their coaches, they've been yeah. trained by a lot, and I can help these guys fundamentally a little bit. I like for them to use their guys, they've used their, their whole life, but the biggest thing I'll get them ready to do is um, get them mentally prepared to go do their job, you know. I always try to tell them all that matters is your last kick, so good or bad, we better move on to the next one. So you got the kicker, you got to work with the punting game. The big thing here in the final couple of seconds is when I spoke to you about three weeks ago, you mentioned, hey, we got to get the return game going. And there's a lot of athletes, a lot of smaller guys, speedy guys that the program's brought in here. And you mentioned something about, hey, we want to return kicks. We don't want to be fair catching. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's another, you got a lot of open space out there. If you can find some explosive guys and um, guys that have great instincts already, uh, number one, you better have ball security and have a guy that can feel the ball and protect the ball too. And, and then if you got that, and you, then you got to put everything else together and get some people that will um, go out there and, and block for them and, and open up some running lanes for them. So, but, you know, as a whole, it's going to take, you know, all the, all the players and the staff to, to make this thing as good as we possibly can. And we should say you'll hear uh, about another kicker here in just a second. There's going to be competition. I know you offered a lot of players, uh, James Shebest did, a lot of players to be in that kicking position, but I know they like Jose Pisano an awful lot. Uh, we'll send it back over for uh, more on the walk-ons with Coach and Kevin. All right, thank you, Steve. Barry Odom back here with us. And, you know, walk-ons are a critical part of any program in terms of just kind of building what you have to do. And these are guys that come in and work hard and, and make a mark on this program. Absolutely. You look at how you build a program and, and what that looks like. Uh, we're going to recruit high school kids. I mean, that, that's, that's uh, very uh, evident in this class on the number of high school kids that we've signed. I think as you transition in the recruiting world as it is today, You've got to make a decision on how many high school kids you want to get in the program to build the foundation, the cultural aspects of your program compared to that and, and uh, 
transfers and portal guys. So we're going to be strong in the high schools. Um, and I'm excited about the high school class that we've signed here. But then the other element of how you build a program, and we did it with Gary Pinkle at University of Missouri for a number of years. You have a very, very strong walk-on program. And there's a number of guys that we've got that we already know that are going to be part of our program in, in that capacity. And the one thing with the walk-on is when you come and watch us practice, you're not going to be able to tell one difference between the starting quarterback or the fifth team quarterback, if he's a, a scholarship or not scholarship. They're all treated the same uh, because there's guys on this list uh, that we'll talk about in a minute that they're going to end up earning a scholarship. And they're good players. They had opportunities to go other places, maybe on scholarship, uh, but they've decided to come here because of the vision that we have and they want to be part of this program. We'll start taking a look at some of these walk-ons. We're going to start with uh, Andre Miono, uh, and, and here's somebody who's maybe uh, going to come in and, and compete in the kicking game a little bit as well. He has the thing with Andre. He's, he's in the program now, so he's got a chance to go through a winter conditioning program. The great thing is he is a kickoff guy, he's an extra point field goal guy, and he has some punting uh, opportunities and capabilities. So anybody that can do all three, he's going to pro provide value. We'll get to evaluate him through the full spring. Uh, I know Coach Chivas is excited about having him, and we're excited that, that he's part of our program. Uh, Makai Mercer uh, is another one here uh, coming in from a, a JC transfer, uh, but somebody uh, who, who's got a little bit of length to him on the back end. Yeah, you look at Makai, and, and again, he's here currently, he's six foot, 190 pounds. He's got good range. We heard, you know, some of the descriptive terms that, that Coach Davis and Coach Mags talked about, and I think he does have some position versatility. Uh, he's got the opportunity to, you know, he's got good range, he's got good speed, ball awareness, some of those things. You know, again, he'll get to go through spring practice, our, our winning edge program, and we've got an opportunity to train him and find out what's the best spot that maybe he can help us next fall. Jay Naboa, uh, another one here that uh, is going to come in on campus and uh, uh, a big kid at 6'5", 300. Yeah, he has is, he is, uh, really got great size. I think you know, he's heavier than that right now. I think our target weight is to get him down to 300 pounds. Um, but he played at a junior college, played well, played at a high level, uh, but wanted to come here to school. And we've been, you know, starting last uh, December, got in contact with us, and he enrolled in January. Another guy that, that has a chance to really contribute this spring. We can develop him. And, and guys that are offense, defensive linemen, uh, they're going to have huge priority in our walk-on program because there's guys that we can develop in year two and year three. They may become starters for us. Well, Las Vegas is the ninth island, so it's always great to get more Hawaiians in here. And we've got uh, Bam Amina, who's transferring from Colorado State from within the Mountain West. And, and uh, hey, here's another one with uh, some good size to him. Yeah, Bam is, is uh, again, in school in January, a mid-year transfer. Uh, he played two seasons ago at, at Colorado State, played meaningful snaps, so he's got some experience. Uh, just watching him work out, he, he does a great job changing direction. He's got good energy, he's got good tempo. I think Coach Shiro will do a nice job on getting him ready to, to help us in the fall. And this final walk on here, uh, obviously the name is familiar, JT Odom, uh, coming uh, from Arkansas and somebody you're very familiar with. I've known JT since birth, so uh, <laughs> I go, go way back and have lots of stories. I'm fortunate, and uh, you know, JT had options uh, to go other places. I mean, he had, you know, as some of the other walk-ons did, he had options to maybe go get his school paid for somewhere else. But JT uh, wanted to be a part of this program. He understands he's got really this scratching the surface on where he's going to play potential-wise. He'll line up at linebacker, but we're excited. And um, I'm honored to have a chance to coach my son. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And he knows that, uh, you know, just because we share the, the same last name, uh, he's got plenty of work to go to go earn his way, and, and he's excited about getting here and getting started. With the walk-ons, how important are special teams to them in terms of maybe getting some, some extra time on the playing field if they can contribute there? Yeah, the thing that, that I want to make sure that, that we understand in our program is special teams are as important as offense and defense because our special teams with Coach Chivas, I think he's the best special teams coach and coordinator in, in all of football. And he is going to give us uh, opportunities to win games. He's going to win games for us in special teams. We're talking about our kickoff coverage. If, if specifically, if you're the L2 spot on kickoff coverage, that is as important spot in in our entire program 
as, as any other spot. And the emphasis that we're going to put on there, uh, on the punt team, on how important that is, on the changing of field position, the kickers that we have, if we can get down into the 30-yard line, get in position, uh, that we know that we can walk away with three points, that's going to be huge. And we're going to spend a lot of time in the kicking game because it's so important for us. It's got to, it's got to be our X factor, and we'll find the right fit. And, and We're back here with UNLV head football coach Barry Odom as we wrap up this signing day special. We know that there are some recruits that are now on campus, but some still aren't. So what's the expectation from you and your staff for those players that aren't here at UNLV to make sure that when they do get here, they're ready to go? Yeah, the thing over the years, kids that come in and, and either, um, you know, December signing or in February now that where we are or or then in, in the summer, in June, the expectation is I, I don't really care if the, the kid is a, a senior on our roster or a first year freshman, we're gonna coach them to, to, to get ready to go play. We're, we've gotta be great teachers. And if, if a young man comes in in June for the first time, then that is just sped up. So the expectation from a mental standpoint of we get, we've gotta do a great job starting to teach now. Uh, if a guy's not on campus, there's plenty of time that you can do uh, phone calls and start talking through some of the install and get them ready from a mental standpoint when they hit campus that it's, it's ready to, I, I want you to be prepared to go play and play right now. Um, we'll get through fall camp, we'll get to close to start our game preparation before we make any decisions on a depth chart. And for all the guys, walk on scholarship, uh, no matter what position, I want them to prepare mentally, physically, uh, that they're going to go play and help us win a championship this year. And that has always been the deciding factor uh, from, a, from a mental standpoint. Are you really preparing to go, to go play? Um, and you know, I think Coach Vice said it, you know, signing day is just, that, that's a wonderful accomplishment, but that's just the next step. And now it's time to really get to work and, and let's go put it into action. Real quick, for the players that you have on campus, the next step on the field is going to be spring practice. One week from today, uh, you have to install systems all around uh, with this team. How important is that, that one month time period? Well, we're limited on time, just like everybody else is in, in college football. But the great thing about that is everybody's got the same amount of time, right? We've all got 24 hours. How are we going to use it? Um, they're working out five days a week right now in, in basic fundamental foundation, lifting, running, change of direction, speed and quickness, and then spring ball is right around the corner and we'll be hitting it fast and heavy. All right, Coach, thank you very much, and thank you for joining us on this signing day special. Thank you. Fox 5 News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.